I think this is one of the nicest wind projects they've done in terms of sound. Guys, uh, we have a giant, giant keyboard we're doing today. And I'm not gonna lie, I don't... I thought I had more stabilizers than I do. I don't know why I've been running out of stabs so quick lately, but this is the Wind X98 R2. It's gigantic. And honestly, I, I hope I have enough stabs for this today. So dusty. I opened it up earlier to make sure everything was all good. So I think they did send me a spare top for this. Uh, I think I left it in the box, um, which I believe was the Southpaw top. I am not gonna build it in Southpaw, um, but I do think you can do both ways. Let me double check. And I believe the price of this was 330. Oh no, there is a, a Southpaw link. Never mind, there is. There's a Southpaw and a regular one. Now we have built a Windex 98 before. Um, the Windex 98 was pretty solid last time. Price point isn't too crazy, uh, which is, you know, 330 is honestly not bad for something like this. You do get a small accent of a brass weight, just like the other version that we built. Uh, I don't have the other version anymore, just because I gave it away. Sorry, my camera was freaking out. Uh, oops, my camera, does, my top down does not like that. But visually, there is not much at all different about this. I think maybe those three little lines, but again, not big enough of a difference. So not a huge visual difference. Um, I don't really care for this X. I don't remember that being on the last one either. Um, or maybe it was, but it, it's whatever. Like that little badge does nothing for me. I like this though, this little accent on the top over here. All right. And Yuri base kit for 35. Was it 35? I thought it was something else. Yeah, the sales tomorrow for Nova Keys. There's some pretty insane stuff, man. There's some pretty insane stuff. <clears throat> this reminds me of the Jairus 80. No, I mean, they have some pretty good options for this. If you guys were interested, the nice thing about this is it's 320. I don't think any of the variants go any higher in pricing. They also have a polycarbonate version. Well, a polycarb top. I don't know if the bottom's also polycarb. I was really hoping to take a look at that one there, but they didn't have any ready for me to take a look at. Um, I, I think this in polycarb, it was the bottom PC too. Yeah, they didn't have any ready for me to take a look at. Um, so I couldn't look at it, but I think this in polycarb would be absolutely sick. And it would probably, obviously it's gonna be a different sound profile. So I, I couldn't tell you guys what the, what the sound profile would be. Um, I did try to get it though. They just didn't have it. Oh, there is a square logo on the top. Either way, I think the logos are both kind of ugly to be honest. Yeah, but 320 and then 335 for Bluetooth model, which is, uh, it's debatable. You know, like if you want Bluetooth, you can get a Bluetooth model. Um, the only negative thing about this, if I remember correctly in the stuff they sent me, let me pull up the conversation. I, if I'm remembering correctly, they did tell me that none of the parts from the original Windex 98 work with the new one. So if you wanted to just transfer it over, if for whatever reason you just want like a new case color, that's not possible. You, oh yeah, okay, it is not compatible. Uh, so you would need to get a whole separate keyboard for this. All right, here's the PCB. Got a little hot swap action going on. And again, I'll have to scrounge for some stabilizers today, but we have to cut this off because it's two separate pieces. And then it is just a wired Bluetooth or solderable PCB. And I believe all the PCBs are the same. Like there's no difference in thickness. Let me double check. No, looks like all of them are 1.6 millimeter PCBs. God bless. That makes me very happy for this. Very, very, very happy. I know it's a preference thing. I understand, but you know what? The more I'm kind of, the more I kind of build more and more keyboards, like on a more frequent basis, the, the less I enjoy building on thinner PCBs. Like I almost find no point in some of the thinner PCBs. So personal preference, I understand that. Oh, we got a little bag of accessories. I don't know if you can do top mounts on this. 
Unless that's a new thing that I didn't read about. Maybe it was my mistake and I over overlooked it. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Actually, what's the front height again? I don't know if they've listed the front height. I know it's a seven degree typing angle. Oh, it's top mount MPC gasket. Okay, so it is top mount for this guy here too. Ooh, top mount it is. I am vibing with top mount. Wait a second, this way. I am 100% doing top. I think I might overrule the, the vote today because I, I really want to do top mount on this. PC top mount is super goaded. Alley with top mount, please. I am personally not a big aluminum top mount guy. So I feel like my answer there would be kind of bias. And I, I kind of hate to admit that, but you know, it's true. I think we do need a plate fork for today though. Hold on, let me get the, you guys want Southpaw, right? So should I get the Southpaw top then? Should we do Southpaw? It's a, it's a really pretty color. Here, well, let's switch to this view for now. I feel like Wind Studio has been putting out some actual, actually some really nice products. I, I've been liking their, their Wind X series. Like I've always kind of liked it. I think they're just kind of refining it now, especially with these R2s, which is nice. There is a butt ton of colors you can pick from, uh, combinations of things, I believe, uh, if you get the extra pieces. But I think the majority of the cases they make are pretty nice looking. Anno quality's always been good. No issue there. I don't think they've missed on any of their boards so far. I really don't think so either. They've done like pretty consistent work across the majority of their boards so far. In case you guys don't know, I should show you guys this too, just cause again, I'm kind of basing this off people looking at the R1. But the, the way that this works is there's a few pieces that kind of like clamp the top together. Move this into my lap. So I'll show you guys what I mean here. So you have this bottom piece and then you have this other piece over here. And this kind of gives it that seam or accent in the center because uh, it uses the middle of this particular, as you can kind of see the extra little lip over there. But yeah, that's what they're, they're doing for that. Right now, let's look through our box of stuff. So I will need the daughter board. I, I do minus points for this, by the way, just, just to be super clear, the fact that it's using a proprietary daughter board uh, and using a ribbon cable, this is where the battery would go, but I don't think mine has a battery. No, there's no battery. That's kind of, it's kind of whatever. I, I don't care about this. I, I wish it was universal. I wish it was more accessible in the future in case this company decides to never make keyboards again, but it is whatever. Silicone gaskets, nope. I think this is for the top mount, top screws. Oh, they did include some stab pads. I don't know why. And then there is another daughter board there. Maybe just an extra one. And I don't know what these are. I think these are extra feet. All right. So we have a few options to mount all this. As you guys can see, there is a bunch of different mounting points to experiment with, I guess for top mount. I'm only gonna do one and one. So center and center. Uh, I think that's kind of cool though. You can kind of pick where you want things to be mounted. Pretty neat in case you want a super, super stiff top mount. Uh, yeah, this is a hot swap. They also offer a solderable PCB. And then I believe they also have the wireless PCB as well. But the wireless one is a little bit more money. Actually, that, that was kind of painless. I'm not gonna lie, that was not that bad. Not that bad. Although, now getting the O-ring to sit nice, a little, or not the O-ring, the ribbon cable to sit nice is kind of a pain in the butt. So I don't think there's anything objectively bad about the build process. Again, I do wish that they didn't go ribbon cables and more so that they used a universal daughter board. Um, that is something I kind of, I hope every designer does, unless you absolutely need some sort of proprietary daughter board. Maybe it's sort of like, I don't know, it needs like 100 LEDs on it or something for some sort of backlight lighting. I don't always agree with the, the route of going proprietary daughter boards. 
it's always good to have something you can swap out in the future. Uh, there was nothing really too bad about this. Again, we've built the Wind X98 before. This is just more of a uh, updated version. I think the price point of this board is pretty nice at 330. I don't, maybe I kind of prefer the regular X badge better, not this square one, but did I? Oh, I forgot to put the diffuser in this. It's okay. You guys will be blinded by the diffuser, but because I, I didn't switch over the diffuser from the other top mount or top uh, plate over here. So no diffuser in this. I'll switch it here in a second. Let me get some keycaps first. I know nothing about keyboards, but you two brought me here. Well, hello, how are you? How is life? I hope things are well for you. All right, Windex. Here's all the visuals of it. So you got your standard wedge, little seam down the middle. Again, not too much has changed from the original one visually. Um, pretty standard. I, I like the way this looks. I do like that visible kind of accent in the middle, kind of uses the bottom frame there. Uh, it does have a very small weight on the back. I think this blue is really pretty actually. Normally I hate navies. Um, I'm still not the biggest fan of the blue color. I think there's some nicer colors on their <laughs> website, but hey, it's all preference. It looks nice. This accent, I'm not a big fan of. I actually prefer the X, that's just the X itself. Uh, I forgot to put the diffuser here. I'll do that afterwards. So you can do gasket or you can do top mount. And they did decide to go with a 1.6 millimeter PCB with absolutely no flex cuts this time. So theoretically, and from what I've already kind of, you know, typed on here, this should sound incredibly nice. In my opinion, again, very subjective. Maybe you like the sound of flex cuts, I don't know. This should sound very, very, very nice. So let's see what this sounds like now. We're using Obscuras and then I did lube the modifier switches. And this is no foam, PC top mount, uh, and Obscura switches with GMK keycaps. Right away, I can tell you, this sounds great to me with having no foam in it. I do appreciate that now for at least this particular wind model, you can kind of go back and forth without having to worry about like, you know, any sort of flex cuts making this sound incredibly thin or hollow or shallow. It sounds pretty good just on its own. And you can use the foam now to actually tune this sound, which I personally think makes more sense. That sounds pretty good. Uh, they probably will sell extras, but right now it's just a group buy. It's 320 to start, 335 for Bluetooth. The color options are E-white, e E-white and pink, black on black, gray and blue, which is what we have, creamy white and brown, which is my favorite color out of all of them and then the semi-transparent version, which I think is super cool. It probably will sound much different, um, but unfortunately I didn't get to look at that today. There is the X or the square logo. I think both logos are kind of whatever. I think the X is probably more preferable, so not this one here. And then it does have either a wired hot swap PCB, a solderable PCB, or a Bluetooth hot swap, all being 1.6 now, which is nice. I like that. Um, the hot swap PCB itself did have a lot of compatibility. It did look like I can go ISO on this uh, as well as split left shift. Didn't have much compatibility on the numpad. I don't know if you absolutely like need, need that. I put the two mounting points for the space bar on the sides. So there was enough room for us to just mount it like here and here, which is nice. I think this is one of the nicest wind projects they've done in terms of sound. Overall, pretty nice. Let's see how bad this looks without putting a diffuser in it. Let's see. Yeah, I definitely need to put the diffuser. 
Sorry, I forgot to put that in, guys. <laughs> My bad. But yeah, it does have a little RGB there. Nothing too crazy, though. It has like a nice, like, slight bit of movement, too. This is quite nice. But yeah, not bad. Uh, again, I think that my biggest gripe with this keyboard is still the proprietary daughter board. I feel like every keyboard that uses that really needs to like think of longevity. You know, it would be nice. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in today. Really appreciate it. I hope you guys learned a few things. I learned a bunch. Um, thanks for being here. Really appreciate all of you guys. And uh, see you guys tomorrow. Bye, everybody. See ya.